in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the camera lens on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. When you get to these, you need to make a decision whether you're going to go in from the front or in the back. When I say the front, I mean removing the screen, removing the camera, and then popping it out. That is the safest way that you can do this. However, if the camera is already sort of exposed, you can get away with doing it from the outside. However, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it safely from the inside of the phone. Starting off, making sure that the device is powered off. This one's got no charge in it. And then you're going to remove the two pentalobe screws from the bottom of the screen. Store those safely for reinstallation later. To remove the screen, you need to get it nice and warm. It's held down with some strong adhesive. I know not many of you have a heat mat to do this job at home. So you can use a heat gun or a hairdryer to achieve the same effect. I've got this little heat gun. This is mobile, this is soldering specific, but a painter's heat gun or a hairdryer will do the same thing. And you're just gonna warm up the screen around the edges until it's warm to the touch. Once it's hot enough, it's best to take a suction cup to the bottom of the screen, so the bottom third just there, and then you're gonna sort of pry upwards and lift upwards on it. It's not gonna come straight away and it might take some easing out, but if you add a little drop of isopropyl alcohol along that bottom edge, it's going to start easing things up, making things easier. We can use a door coat blade as well. That's going to help us get underneath the edge of the screen. You're just going to insert it in the gap between the bottom of the screen and the chassis, making sure that it's flat, lifting up with the suction cup, pulling back, and eventually the screen's just going to separate from the adhesive. Once you've made one little break in the adhesive, then the rest of it comes fairly easily. And as you can see, we've separated the screen a little bit. Add a couple of drops of alcohol. All I'm aiming to do is make this gap big enough to fit one of these little blue plastic picks into, and then just run the guitar pick along the edge, separating the screen from the chassis. Just be very careful when you're doing this, this part because these screens are very fragile and they're also very expensive to replace should you break it. So really take your time. But once you've got to this stage, the right hand edge, bottom edge and left hand edge separated, you should be able to get the pick in like that and pop the screen off. So the screen opens up like the front cover of a book, just like that. And then I'm gonna leave the suction cup attached to it just to hold it in place whilst I remove the screws. Now we're gonna use a tri-wing screwdriver to remove all the screws that hold down this shield over here. Just a little note that all these screws are different sizes or many of them are a couple of different sizes. So make sure that you remove them and store them in an order so that you remember where each one goes. The last thing you want to do is get it all the job all done only to find that you've cracked the motherboard because you put a long screw somewhere where a short screw belongs not to worry or anything so now we'll use the tweezers to remove the shield just be aware that there's a bit what sticks out just up at the top here so you have to sort of slide it out and pull it out like that now we need to disconnect the battery to remove power from the device disconnect this screen cable just here I'm using a plastic spudger for this, by the way. And then there's one more connector just at the top here that you need to remove before you can detach the screen. It might still be a little bit stuck down around the edges, but as long as those two connectors are removed, it's all good to go. Because we're gonna be removing the camera lens from this, there are gonna be a few shards of glass kicking around. These little cameras here are very sensitive. That's the dot projector infrared camera and the front facing camera. It's always best to protect these with a little bit of Capton tape or any kind of low tack tape you don't want something that's going to leave a lot of residue behind. And I always find that Capton tape does it really well. So just go ahead and put a strip of that over these cameras just to protect them whilst we're playing around with the cameras. Next, there's four tri-wing screws holding down the shield just here. There is a couple more, but I'll show you those in a minute. But go ahead and remove all four of those first and store them in a pattern so that you'll be able to identify where you've took them out from. There's another one just down in this bottom right corner here. That's also a tri-wing screw. And then the last one is a cross-head screw up in this top corner. Go ahead with the tweezers now and remove that shield. Use the back of the tweezers to pop the camera out and then your spudger to disconnect the two connectors holding that camera in place. As long as you've popped it out a little bit with the tweezers first, you can just lift the cable up and pull it out. And just be careful to not get this in a dusty environment make sure it's well protected whilst you're working on it. For me, I always find that it's probably best to put a, a little microfiber cloth over it so that it's not gathering dust whilst you're working on the rest of the phone. Now the camera lens that we're removing is just this one here. And the best way to remove it is to use your heat gun or hairdryer to warm up and soften the adhesive that's holding it in place. Notice how I'm lifting the, 
the phone itself away from the desk because I don't like to put them flat down when all the parts are exposed inside it. But you should be able to now, once it's warmed up a bit, just poke that camera lens through with a plastic tool, just like that. At this point, we do need to put the phone face down on the desk. So I'm gonna put a microfiber cloth down, followed by the phone, and then we're gonna use the heat gun at the same time as using the tweezers. And we're just gonna sort of pry out each shard of glass so that it's nice and easy to remove. If the camera, if you've decided to do this from the outside and you've left the cameras in, then just be on and off with the with the heat gun or hairdryer because too much heat can kill those cameras. Now that most of the larger shards of glass have been removed, I'm going to use one of these little chisely blades and I'm just going to run it around the edge of the camera ring. Being careful not to poke at all the metal around the edges, it's very easily scratched around there. And I'm just going to make sure that as much of the adhesive as humanly possible is removed. With all that removed, I've just got this little metal brush. It won't mark the stainless steel outer ring, but it will remove any leftover bits of glue and any dust and gunk what's on there. And you can also add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to clean it up a bit, give it a good wipe down. And this is just about ready for the new camera lens to be stuck on there. It looks like it's a bit scratched around the edge, but it's not, it's just dust was gathered on there and moved around. I promise you. I know everyone's going to ask me what glue I'm using for this. I'm using ultra black gasket marker oil resistant adhesive. So it's a gasket glue. It's a silicon based adhesive and it's very good at holding things down whilst maintaining water resistance. So this is a very good glue. I take this glue and I put it into one of these little syringes and then I'll put a very small nib on the end of that. That's how we stick these things down, just like that. So as for the lens that I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna show you how to pull these camera lenses so that you can ensure that you've got this official Sapphire Crystal ones. And this is a housing that we have swapped out for a customer in the past. It's got a smashed camera lens there. Is it smashed or is it glue? I don't know. Is it cake? Uh, I'm just gonna make sure that it's suitable for this. So I'm gonna just wipe it up, have a little look for it and inspect it. This one looks good to me. So, like I was saying, the only way that you can ensure that these are sapphire crystal genuine camera lenses that you're using is if you take one from a existing phone, a, a genuine housing, what's not been tampered with before. The best way to do it, use one of these, look. It's got a perfectly shaped pointy end. Stick that over the end of it. It looks a bit dodgy, this, but whatever. I then rest the housing on that one, on the lens that I want to take off. And then I'm going to crank up the heat on the heat gun, and I'm going to blow some hot air at it until it's warm enough to just pop off. It's a bit awkward and difficult to remove, but eventually this camera lens should come off without cracking the camera itself. Although in the past, I must admit that I have cracked a couple of lenses like this, and sometimes they ping off into the stratosphere as well. But this should go any minute now before it gets to a point where it's burning my fingers as well. Just like that. <laughs> So it pops off a bit violently. However, we have got a genuine camera lens there. All you need to do is give it a little cleaning off. I wouldn't worry about this adhesive that's left behind. It, this such a small amount of it that it's not gonna affect anything. If you're ever handling these, don't touch the inside of the lens. If you do, use a microfiber cloth to do it. So I'm just gonna wipe off and clean up any dust on there, any smears or out, but that's pretty clean and ready to go. So I'm gonna put a fresh tip on the end of my glue. I've got a really fine, like one mil nozzle or something on there. And I'll, put, I'll leave it on this bit of, this little bit of bubble wrap and we'll apply this glue all the way around. When you're applying the glue, don't worry if you get any big blobs on there. I'll show you how to clean them up as well. Make sure you're quite liberal with the adhesive. Spread it all over there. Make sure there's plenty on it. And then what you can do to make sure that it's not gonna leak into the inside of the camera is just run a Q-tip inside there. Now we're gonna get our genuine article camera lens and we're gonna pop it into place where it belongs, just there. Come wipe it up a little bit. Don't rush into dropping any uh, alcohol on it yet because it might affect the adhesive setting. But that went on real nice then. 
so I'm not worried about putting any tape on it. If you're worried about it popping out, just put a bit of tape on it like you're putting a band-aid on it, but that's just about installed. All that remains to do now is to flip the phone over. Because we've been playing around in this camera area, I'm just going to give it a little blowout as well. Make sure that there's any, any dust what's got in there is blown out, and then we can pop the camera back in place straight away. Connect it up on that connector there, on that connector there, and then of course we've got the shield over the top. Let's wipe my mucky fingerprints off there. You didn't think I was really going to leave them behind, did you? No way. Pop that shield on there. There it goes. There we go. And then if you remember, we've got the crosshead screw up the top. A little triwing screw down the bottom here. And then you've got those four triwing screws on top of the LiDAR sensor that we can secure down now, ensuring that camera won't move anywhere. So with those installed, we need to remove the adhesive from around the edges. Just another little side note, just make sure that you don't remove this adhesive until you've secured that camera back in place. Leave this tape on there as well. You can see how much dust and gunk is in there. You don't want that getting in the camera area. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This little blade is an absolute lifesaver when it comes to removing this gunk from the edges of the screen. It makes the job, what is difficult, a lot easier. Obviously be careful when you're using sharp tools around batteries because you don't want to poke them or break them. But yeah, just go ahead, work your way around all the edges of the screen to remove as much of the adhesive as you possibly can. I'm going to skip to the bit where it's all cleaned off. Now that all the gunk is removed, we're going to slap a new dust and moisture resistance seal on there. This one might or might not be for an iPhone 13 Pro Max because I couldn't find one for a 14 Pro Max. However, it will do the same job very, very well. Sometimes you've got to improvise. I'm just going to run it right into the edges with the back edge of the plastic spudger to make sure that it's sat and stuck real nice. And then peel off the top film, first of all. It looks like we've removed all the adhesive in one like that. So we've got a new adhesive seal on there. If you look at this screen, you can see the edges are a bit dusty. So I'm just going to run, run a metal brush over the edge of those. Just being careful, obviously, of the important stuff. But making sure that it's clean. There's no point putting dust onto a nice clean surface, is there? Obviously, we are retrofitting so a little bit of dust might get through but we're just going to try and make it as clean as possible and all the dust on the outside we don't worry about we just don't want it getting in the way of our seal quick brushing off with a little car detailing brush and we can now offer up and reattach this screen now that's reattached we can reattach the battery and then we'll drop into place at our big shield, what goes over everything. It's a little bit awkward up the top because it's got a slide under a little rail. And now it's just a case of reinstalling those screws that we took out, making sure they all go back into the right place. The longest of the screws goes in the very, very top, but you'll notice that like, for example, this one's a little bit longer than the rest. That's because it goes into one of the standoff screws underneath the shield. As long as you remember that, you will be okay. And you get nothing to worry about. Also, if you're not already, while I'm screwing these in, click that subscribe button and drop me a comment if you're having a go at this repair yourself. Let me know how you get on. I do try and respond to some comments, although sometimes I can be a little bit slack. Anyway, that's all screwed down. Let's not forget to remove this little bit of tape that we put up there. We can fold this screen down, reattach it at the top first, so it make sure that it sits flush there. And that means that the rest of it will sit with a bit of pressure on them edges. Make sure you rub it in, secure the adhesive down. If you have got a heat mat at this point, it would be a good idea to pop it on there for five minutes, let it warm up and sort of reactivate the adhesive. Secure the two pentalobe screws into the bottom of the phone now. It's got no charge in it, so you'll have to come back in five minutes when it's got some charge and I'll show you that the camera lens works. Not that there's much what can go wrong with it, but it's very important to test it on like a white background to make sure that there's no dots or anything on there because they're difficult to remove, especially once you put it all back together. If I don't come back, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. I did promise that I'd be back and it's powered on now. Just make sure that you flick through the cameras and it's nice and clear, just like this one is, I suppose. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.